Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's very exciting because I bought myself a new laptop. Look, it fills almost the whole screen. It's an ASUS ZenBook. And what I'm going to do in this video, oh look, I'm back again. What I'm going to do is to share with you my unboxing and first impressions of this machine. I'll obviously give you the specs and things as well, tell you why I bought it. But I'm also going to show you how to create a backup system image and a system repair drive which is a good thing to create on a new computer, but indeed it's a good idea to have a backup system image on any computer. So let's go and do a very exciting unboxing, but also that backup activity. So, here I am with my new computing companion. I do like this box because it's a 69 ratio box. It fits on the screen very well for this, uh, for this video. And if I flick it over, you will see on the back, this is actually an ASUS UX330U. There's also different specs you can get inside that. This is an i5. I'll tell you more about the specs a bit later on. Oh look, caution, lithium ion batteries inside may explode or do terrible things. Hopefully it won't do that. Anyway, we turn it over. The main thing for me in, in picking this was, was twofold. One, I wanted to have a laptop which had got a good battery life. And in theory, this will give me up to 12 hours. Now, I believe that when I experience it, but it should give eight to eight to 10 hours, hopefully in, in, in reasonable use, at least initially. And secondly, I wanted something which was light. This only weighs 1.2 kilograms, which is about the same weight as the Acer Aspire One netbook it's gonna be replacing, which I got amazingly over five and a half years ago. I can't believe that. Anyway, let's get inside which means we're going to go back the other way, doesn't it? You'd hope I know what I was doing here. There we are, let's go in that way. Uh, Stanley the knife is on hand. So is Mr. Scissors. Don't know if Mr. Scissors will be needed, but certainly we'll need Stanley the knife just to uh, flick through the thing on there. And hopefully that way we can now, oh, it's just swizzing around day, isn't it? Let's uh, get inside. Oh, it opens from the bottom. That's very strange, isn't it? Let's flick over. I'll get, keep, keep you in, in shot. And this is clearly it, look, wow. This is my new computer. That's exciting. And uh, this is the thing it comes in. I almost stopped talking to you then. I was too excited about the computer. Wow, look at that. That's a, that's a lovely, shiny computer. We'll look at that in all, its, all of its detail in a second, but uh, aluminium. It's got the uh, spun um, rings you get on the top of all the, uh, the, uh, the ASUS emblems. That's a signature part of these models. Let's just see what else is in the box before we uh, carefully have a look at that. Lots of bits of cardboard, a um, little piece of paper, little thing in search of the incredible. I'd, I'd settle for the normal actually, but uh, if we want to have the incredible, that's fine as well. What's in here? Oh, nothing, that's good. Um, there's some weight to this box in addition to the thing, so there must be something. What else have we got in here? This is a little box there, and we've got a oh, power adapter, as we would expect. Is there nothing else at all? No, there's nothing else at all. I thought there might be something exciting else in here, but there isn't. That is it. No, that's all we've got in the box. So I think we should now get on and look a bit more uh, closely at the uh, ASUS uh, ZenBook itself. ZenBook UX330UA comes in lots of different configurations and uh, this one specifically is an FC093T. And this comes with an i5-7200U CPU. This is a 7th generation Kaby Lake dual core CPU, base frequency 2.5 GHz, turbos up to 3.1 GHz. And it's got Intel HD Graphics 620. And you might be thinking that's actually a slightly older i5 and that's true, this is a quarter three 2016 i5 inside this machine, but the total configuration I think is very good for the money. This has got eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. And for this, I paid 770 pounds on Amazon Co UK in February, 2018. And I think that that's pretty good value. 770 pounds for a laptop with 10 to 12 hours battery life, 1.2 kilograms in weight, i5, eight gigabytes of RAM, and that 512 gigabyte uh, M.2 SSD. I'm very pleased with that. In terms of its other specs, this is a very thin laptop, only 13.5 millimeters. And as you can see on its left side, it's got a full size, uh, what, type A USB 3 port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone socket, and a full size SD card slot. Although do note, this is not full insert. So you can use this to insert 
a full-size SD card, but they don't stay right inside the machine. I think I'd rather have had a micro card which stayed all the way in rather than the full size that actually sticks out. But of course it's useful depending on what you want to use it for. On the other side of the machine, we have a barrel jack for 19 volt power input, a second full size type A USB 3.0 port and USB 3.1 supplied by USB C connector. And then next to that, our final connector is a micro HDMI connector. Now, I was slightly nervous buying a device with micro HDMI rather than full size HDMI because a lot of the time when I use this machine, I'll be taking it on the road to make presentations with clients, plugging it into their projectors. But um, I guess these days I have to accept the fact if I want to have a small lightweight machine, I can't have full size HDMI, let alone a VGA connector. So I'm going to have to carry around a range of adapters, but I'm sure I can sort that out. If we look at the base, it is uh, unremarkable. Nice piece of metal though, a couple of speaker grills. You can take this whole base plate off. You'll see there's fixings here if you've got the right uh, implement to get these off. So you could, for example, take this open, take out the uh, SSD for the new M.2 SSD if you wanted to. But I've no intention of going inside this thing, at least not while the thing is still in warranty. If we open the thing up, we can do that, I think, with one hand. It comes up uh, quite easily, quite a sturdy top, but a very nice stiff hinge. It doesn't go back that far, that's as far as it'll go, but that's certainly enough for me to to use the machine. Uh, you'll see it's got a very nice keyboard. This is a very soft touch keyboard, about 1.5 millimeters to travel, but nice and soft for my uh, old and RSI fingers. Fantastic trackpad, very large, very, very smooth trackpad. And the screen here is a matte screen, so you don't get all those reflections. It's a 13.3 inches, 1920 by 1080. And as I can show you here by the magic of filmmaking, the machine is pre-installed with Windows 10. Sadly, there's also a pre-installation of tacky stickers, which for some reason have to be stuck all over nice computers before they actually leave the factory. I'm sure the marketing people love it. I'm sure everybody else hates it. I imagine the designers sitting around going, I'm going to design you a really nice machine. And then, oh, could you just stick some really tacky stickers on top before it leaves the factory? Oh yeah, we'll do that for you. It'll make your device look really nice. It'd be difficult to get these off as well. It is certainly you have to get them off very carefully because Although the base and the top of this machine are made out of metal, the main casing is plastic, which is clearly sprayed silver to make it look like the metal. So if you took these stickers off, you could cause some, some damage that I'm not sure I'm going to try. Finally, in a spectacular victory for the stupid ideas department, they put the power key here. So yes, it's part of the keyboard, I don't particularly mind that, but they put it where the delete key should be. They pushed the delete key along. And I thought long and hard about buying this laptop knowing about this, because clearly there's a good chance you're gonna hit this button rather than delete key and you'd put the laptop to sleep. But then I thought, well, actually it's not a problem because in Windows you've got a setting so you can set what happens when you press the power button. And we're gonna set that to do absolutely nothing. So I might hit this by accident now and then and not get a delete key. At least I won't put the machine into sleep mode or turn it off. So there we are, there's my new ZenBook. Yes, it's got a few niggles. I knew about them before I bought it. There's always new niggles with any new computer. You always have to lose to win, as I always say, in computing. But uh, I think this machine will serve me well out on the road with clients making presentations. And because it's got a reasonable spec, i5 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and that fantastic 512 gigabyte SSD, I can use it for some basic lightweight video editing and for some audio editing. Yes, this is not the ultimate video editing machine. It isn't my main video editing machine by any means, but it does give me some flexibility, which I've not had before, to do some audio and video work when I'm away from my office. So, here we are in Windows 10 on the ZenBook. This is the out-of-the-box configuration. You can see it's still got all this kind of stuff. Does anyone really like their PC looking like a Windows 8 tablet? I, I just don't get all this stuff that comes up. This will all be disappearing very shortly. And I'll also be rescaling things so I can see things a bit better on the screen. Sorry if this is a bit small for you right now, but for reasons will become clear in a second, it has to be. And uh, we open up this PC, which I've added to a desktop. That's the one change I've made to the out-of-the-box configuration. We'll just check properties. And this is definitely the machine I expected it to be, an i5 7200U, 8 gig of RAM. It's always worth checking you've got the spec you paid for. Let's just have a look at the battery life. Down here you'll see battery is uh, showing, what, 10 hours remaining on 74% charge. I'm not quite sure I believe that. That's, that's looking pretty good though, so I suggest it can do its, its 10 to 12 hours, isn't it? Having said that, battery life is about to plummet massively because I've now got plugged into this machine a Corsair USB 3 drive and more significantly this 2.5 inch 
hard drive so I can make a backup system image and some recovery media. And to do that, we'll go down to the menu and we'll go to settings. And we'll just scroll down here to update and security. And then we'll go to backup. You'd probably have guessed that. But what you might not have guessed is we're going to go now to backup and restore Windows 7, which is because it's a legacy Windows 7 application. This is what we need to use. Anyway, if we go to here, create a system image. This will have a look for backup devices and hopefully find the hard drive which has been connected. And there it is. Look, it's found the uh, drive and uh, we can go uh, next on that. And uh, we're going to back up basically everything on this machine, which I think is a good idea. This means I can get the machine back to this factory state if I needed to. And we'll click on start backup. It really is a very straightforward process, although of course it will take a little bit of time. And there we are, it has finished. We've now got a single file, an image file of everything on this machine stored on that uh, external USB drive. Now it's now said that we want to make a system repair disk because the system image we've just created, you can't risk recover from that unless you've got some bootable media to boot up to to then access that image to put it back on the machine, if you see what I mean. Now I will press yes here. I don't think this is going to work though because this will say we did not find a CD DVD burner because you can only make a system repair disk to a, an optical drive. It obviously isn't an optical drive on this computer. But do not despair. Never a good thing to despair, is it? We'll get rid of all of this. And uh, what we can do is to go down here and we can type in, this is the quickest way to get there, I think, to create a recovery drive. There we are. So just type in create recovery drive. Yes, we want to do that. And this will create a recovery drive, which is a bootable drive, which will be able to get back into Windows to reinstall Windows if we need to if we have any problems. So we'll do that and we'll put the system files on it. Why not? And it'll uh, have a little look. And uh, there we are. It wants a drive that can contain at least 16 gig of space. It's going to be this. D is the Corsair USB key plugged into this computer. So we'll click next. Um, everything will be deleted on that drive on that USB key. That's fine. And it'll create a recovery drive. And here we are. By the magic of filmmaking, it is all finished. That took a very long time, well over an hour. We look at the battery life, it's now showing what? Uh, two hours, 59 minutes remaining, which is a 36%. It's obviously taken a lot of that, the battery running these drives to do this. But uh, I'm pleased I've now got a image of the system and a bootable media which I could use to recover this machine if it has a catastrophic failure of Windows, if it gets something like a ransomware attack, which I hope it doesn't, which takes it all out. It really should be the case that recovery media are in the box with the computers it always used to be, but they aren't these days. So I would encourage you, if you get a new machine, or if you're just running a machine you've never done this before, do create yourself some backup media because you may need them in the future. I'm very pleased with my new ZenBook. It's a very nice piece of kit, a very tactile piece of hardware, great feel to the top lid, great feel to the trackpad in particular, and a very shiny as you can see. So I, I hope I'll be using this for many years to come to help me make the videos on this channel. It'll pop up on screen now and then, but it'll be being used in the background a lot more than that. I've yet to decide exactly what it's going to run. Right now it's still got Windows 10 on it, but uh, I'm sure it's going to end up with Linux to, to some extent, I, I'm very tempted just to wipe the thing completely and just put the next mint on them and be done with it and that's it, and maybe run the old virtual machine for Windows if I need it. But uh, I may dual boot it, I'm not sure. I've still got to make that decision. Anyway, that's now it for another video. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen here. If so, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.